Hello, I'm Mitch Waite, founder of MogianMonster.com, and I am a Bigfoot researcher. I want to thank all of our viewers and followers uh, for six years of loyal viewing, and the audience seems to be growing, so I must be doing something right. We're entering our seventh season with nearly two million views. We do pay attention to your suggestions. And we intend to try those uh, items that you may suggest that we have not already tried, like uh, possibly mirrors behind a, a game camera or in front of a game camera that allows it to look around a tree so that the Bigfoot won't be uh, wary of the camera. Um, so keep your suggestions coming. If we can do them, if we can afford to do them, we'll do them. We do not accept comments or suggestions that are profane, belittling, degrading, or demeaning. So basically keep it personal or keep it professional. Um, we do not like comments that advertise other people's organizations or their products or something like that. Uh, keep in mind that we don't endorse anybody else if it if one sneaks through uh, saying hey look at our great video or something like that well uh, you know they probably had a pretty good comment with it uh, saying something else but it doesn't necessarily mean that we endorse their endeavors so if you uh, write and ask me what my opinion is about a certain person that may be uh, displaying a Bigfoot um, or one that shot one or what do I think about this video or that video um, you know I really don't like to comment on other people's works I like to let them their own works speak the truth uh, basically time will tell if they're real if they're legitimate the time they'll stand the test of time I would like to mention that, uh, you know, we do get some critical comments and so forth, but I want to remind you that we are people. We make mistakes. Um, it has been a learning process. Uh, we don't know exactly what to do in every case. We have come a long ways in the last six years, and we hope to continue to improve. Um, we have several long-term projects that will encompass many years of study. One of them is the Bigfoot Garden of Eden project where we're actually trying to uh, increase the amount of food that's available to all animals. Uh, the hopes here is that if there's food, the animals come and Bigfoot will follow. Uh, we've got the Bigfoot Face database and that has proven to be very valuable so far. Uh, we're looking for any and all screen captures that may be in videos and so forth uh, to put them in our database and um, we want to make see if we can get any matches because that way we can eliminate them from being uh, optical illusions, paranoia, uh, par paranoia or some, whatever that is. Uh, basically squash blobs because um, if they are appear in uh, several different places at different times then chances are they're the real thing uh, we do have do practice habitation um, I wear my typical red shirt every time I go out I encourage anybody that goes with me to wear the same color or red shirt and that's basically to identify you as part of my clan because that might save you from getting clocked upside the head with a rock because I've had various researchers go with me that didn't understand the concept and they've got rocks thrown at them so you know it's uh, your choice but I would suggest wearing a red shirt when you're with me some of our philosophies don't match with other Bigfoot hunters or Bigfoot researchers and I want to go through those with you now so that you'll understand what we try to do. We do not try to outdo Bigfoot in the forest. 
In other words, uh, for one, we're not hunters and we're not predators. And we try not to appear as a threat to them. Uh, we don't try to hide ourselves. We don't uh, try to mask our scent. Um, we don't chase them. We avoid appearing as a threat to them. And we are a no harm, no kill group. Things that we've learned about the Bigfoot is chasing them at night is a futile effort. They can outrun you. They can smell you uh, miles away. They um, have much, much better eyesight. They can hear better than you can. They're stronger, more agile, faster. Basically, they're the kings of the night. And you will only see them when they want you to see them. Uh, that's how good they are. We have found that wood knocking and rock clacking really doesn't, and sound blasting really doesn't do that much good. Very rarely do you get a conversation or a reply. Um, I would suggest only doing that when they instigate it. That way you're answering them. Uh, as far as the screams, moans, howls, and so forth, or whistling, you have no idea what you're communicating to them. And basically, you're just giving your location away. Precisely. They know exactly where you're at. Um, if you try to trick them, you might succeed once. But they learn very quickly. And you probably won't catch them again. So being a trickster or doing something to harm them or scare them or earn mistrust with them, they will disappear and you'll not get a chance. They will remember you whether you are a threat or a predator or some people out there just enjoying the forest. And it's all because they know when your attention is focused on them. They know that. They can sense that. Almost every animal in the forest can do that. Even lizards can do that. So, you know, you do not want to present yourself as a threat. Uh, we found that they love sweets, chocolates, brownies, nutty buddy bars, and Snickers. Uh, they seem to prefer our stuff. Because, uh, basically, they prefer, prefer the things that they can't get themselves, um, you know, such as cavities from eating all the sugar. No, we don't give them that much candy and so forth, but they are interested in getting goodies like that. Uh, they do like peanut butter, but they also like Nutella, the chocolate brand. Okay, uh, They like peanut butter, and they like peanut butter and honey sandwiches. They love uh, cooked meat, such as bacon, pork, beef, turkey, wild game, kind of in that order, because we've tried putting things out and see what gets taken first. Okay. Um, they are mimics. They can use a variety of animal calls. They can mimic them very well. So in your particular area, you need to know what your animals are and what they sound like. That includes birds, coyotes, um, cats, whatever. So you need to really study up on what they actually sound like so you can actually pick out the Bigfoot when they're uh, vocalizing. They also can whistle like a human. And uh, I have instigated conversations back and forth with them. And when they realized that I was not a Bigfoot, they threw rocks at me. Uh, so they were expressing their displeasure. Um, but they do whistle. So listen for human-type whistling. Uh, they do have a language. And uh, basically, they may understand ours. They sit up uh, above the camps a lot of times, and they watch. We're their reality TV. Uh, they like to watch us. And... Uh, they know how to open set soda cans and stuff like that by watching us. They know that we go to the uh, ice chest to get uh, food and drink and so forth. So they know exactly what that ice chest is. 
They see us open the ice chest, they see us close the ice chest, so they can do that too. Um, so, you know, we've got a lot of tests coming up in this season. Uh, a lot of things that we're going to be trying. We're going to be trying your suggestions. Uh, we're going to try to keep ahead of them, uh, keep them uh, curious about us so that they'll keep returning and we might be able to get those wonderful videos and, and photos that everybody really desires to get. I want to thank you for watching and participating. Uh, you know, make sure that you uh, sign up or subscribe to our videos and to the uh, articles. Um, and you'll see them on Facebook if you're following me. So, thanks again. And uh, the next time you'll see me, I will be coming back from an expedition. And I hope to have many videos and, and stories to tell you. Thanks a lot. Bye.